So good morning, everyone. This is the Friedrich Naumann Foundation and Alde Party, as usually uh, going online with hot discussions after election days. One of those we had uh, last night uh, in Germany, and uh, there's really a lot to talk about. Uh, who's going to succeed Angela Merkel? What does that mean for German politics? With uh, a view to the interior side of Germany, what does that mean with um, regard to young people? What does that mean with regard to uh, the European level? And I'm very happy that uh, we could partner again with Alde and have bright people here to discuss those issues today with us under the guard of Mark Netta, our friend from uh, the FDP Bundestag group here in Brussels. And Mark, I would say without further ado, I hand over to you and you introduce our guests and the topic as such. Thanks a lot and all to all out there have fun with our discussions. Yes, th thank you very much, Thomas. And uh, good morning for me. Um, so I, uh, my name is Mark. Um, I have the pleasure of uh, moderating this debate this morning. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce um, our two panelists today. So we have Dr. Thorsten Lieb, who is a newly elected member of the German parliament. Congratulations. Um, from uh, Frankfurt, uh, chairman of FDP Frankfurt. And we have um, Alice Schmidt, who is the international officer of the youth wing of FDP, um, the German Young Liberals. Um, before I give the word to both of you for short introductory analysis, um, just uh, one or two matters of debate housekeeping. So we have one hour, we're going to finish, uh, we're going to um, comply with the German stereotype, we're going to finish at 10 sharply. So if you do have any questions that you would like to address um, to the panelists, you can do that um, by submitting them in writing. Um, then they will pop up and the questions that get, uh, or the blocks of questions that are gonna get asked a lot, uh, I will then ask the panelists, please do ask questions uh, as of the beginning of the debate, because if you ask questions only in the last five minutes, we're not gonna have enough time to go through them. Um, and that's it. And then I would um, pass the word, I would give the word first to Torsten Lieb as a newly elected parliamentarian for your general analysis of the election results, but also maybe if before you analyze, if you could um, spend one or two minutes of just giving us the facts of the results yesterday, because I think a lot of people, the, the Germans in the audience have probably spent a lot of time this morning reading newspapers, but some other people might have just woken up and only read the headlines and not know exactly um, what happened yesterday. So if you could start with that and then give a general analysis, um, and then afterwards we will pass the word to Alice. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, to, to, to make it uh, make it short and simple, the results uh, follow rather sharply the, the latest uh, latest survey results. So there is no uh, no hard surprise uh, to say to say that uh, to say that way. But what's uh, what is uh, in key very important? Uh, I would like to say that the the conservative parties, both CDU and CS, CSU in Bavaria, were only electable in Bavaria. Uh, they lost about eight percentage points of of their votings uh, from the last voting, which is their uh, yeah the. the uh, just let me think. Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. They are. Um, the last result they all they had in all the German history after the Second World War. That's uh, that's of course very very hard for them. And what we expect that they have hard discussions internally uh, just before them. The uh, Social Democratic Party won with about uh, twenty five percent, which is a little bit surprising. Not looking to the last weeks, uh, but when going uh, one year back, they are very, very to the bottom. And uh, some people thought in Germany, uh, "What's the future of the so social democrats here?" But they won the election at the very end. The Green Party um, lost. Uh, looking some months 
back uh, the, the first position they had in some survey results. So they, they ended with, with about 40, 14 percentage. And we as the, as the German liberals, uh, one, one percentage point. So we ended with uh, nearly one percentage point. So we ended with 11.5 which is, and that's, uh, that's a really great result uh, to us, the second result above 10 percentage points in a row, the first time ever in the history of the Federal Republic of Germany that, that we received such, such results. Um, and it was very hard, uh, even in the last days and weeks, to receive these results as the conservative parties very hardly pushed forward saying when the German voters want to prohibit a red, red, green uh, next uh, next government in Germany, you have to vote for the for the CDU and the CSU, because nobody knows what the liberals will will do. Of, of course, we pushed this back and said the best way to push liberal politics in Germany into government is, of course, to, to vote for, for FDP and not for any other party. Uh, so what we can say, uh, so i switch a little bit to the analysis, is that the German FDP voters are real liberals who voted uh, for, for FDP. No people uh, who voted for tactical purposes, uh, FDP, I would like to say, and uh, we can see this especially in the local results, um, the best the best results are in Baden-Württemberg with about 15 percentage points. And the second best is here in Hessen with 12.8. Uh, I will, I think, yeah, 12.8 is the right, uh, right result. So um, it's great to see that we have a really basis of more than 10 percentage points for liberal politics in, in Germany. And the key question now is how to transfer this election result into, into government. There are two main, uh, two, two main possibilities for the next government. The one is the so-called Jamaica coalition uh, between the um, conservative parties, the Greens and us. And uh, the other possibility is uh, is the it's red, green, and uh, and uh, social democrats, the Greens, and and us, the so-called Ampel, in, um, in 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 Germany, the uh, so formerly known as Great Coalition between uh, the conservatives and the social democrats are still possible, but nobody in Germany expects that they give it a third try. Um, to, to go into government in, into this situation. And the um, red, red, green uh, uh, possibility isn't one because the left-wing parties, the, uh, the, the links, links party um, law, uh, have a very have a reduced result. So they, they have, there is no chance to, f uh, to found such a government. So our, our analysis basically as, um, as liberal parties, we had a good outcome. We are very happy with the, with the result and we are prepared to go into the next German, German government. Christian Lindner made this very clear yesterday evening in the, in the after election discussion saying, we want to go into government and uh, we want to talk to the other parties, especially to the Greens, because when the Greens and we uh, are aligned, uh, we, we decide uh, who will be the next chancellor in, in Germany. So we will see what the next days will bring us. This afternoon in Berlin, the FDP fraction will constitute. So we will be prepared very, very early to start in the discussions. And so we will see what the next days bring to us. Thank you very much, uh, Thorsten, for your first analysis. Um, before I give the word to Alice, can I just remind everyone, so if you do want to ask questions, um, please do not use the chat function to everyone, but use the question and answer button. Um, then the questions will pop up and then we can take them into account. Uh, without knowing it, Thorsten, you have already answered the first question from the audience, uh, because uh, our friend Mark from VVD has asked, is FDP prepared to assume government responsibility? And you have already indicated that uh, I think the answer is yes. 
Um, we will go into that question a bit more later in the debate. But now, first, I want to bring in Alice um, from the uh, Young Liberals. And if in your analysis, it um, would be great if you could also focus a bit on the, the role that young people played in the elections and hopefully will play um, in the next four years. Of course. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so from the perspective of young people and especially from liberal perspective um, for young people, it was a very good result because um, if you go into the numbers, we see that 23% of the voters who voted for the first time um, voted for the FDP, 23%. And this is more than they voted for the Greens because this was what was just 22%. So this shows us that there is a great potential and that liberals have a good standing within the young generation because they see, or from our perspective, why they voted in such a high amount for us was that, for example, the um, politicians lost the uh, the view for the young people during the corona crisis they did a lot for the older people they they introduced support to to um to um companies but they didn't introduce support to students and to pupils and we also saw that digitalization in germany has such a bad status that at schools it was not a um, schools um, didn't have the possibility to have a digital um, um, lessons so um, so the a whole generation lost like one and a half years they couldn't go to other countries they couldn't have the same experiences they couldn't meet each meet each other so this would, had a great impact and I think that the liberal parties. Um, they they had that in their mind and they always um, focus on that topic. So I think um, that there is a big frustration and that we were the party that found that frustration and talked about that. And this is also, from my perspective, a very good strategic position um, for the young generation in general, because the Greens, they are also focusing on more young topics. And as you maybe know, Germany has a very old structure and old, older people tend to vote for SPD and CDU, which is uh, not good when we have a look on, on finance things. Because, for example, um, we have to pay a lot of money um, to, to still pay for our pensions because they are so high. The amount what we have to pay is so much that it is not enough what we are paying now for, for, um, for the pensions. We have to get something out of the whole finance budget to, to pay that and it will be more and more expenses. So we need more uh, new ideas um, to tackle those um, challenges. This is, for example, um, to go on the capital market with our pensions. And this is what we brought in. And so I think that when we now go together with the Greens and they already said that they want to talk with us, um, this is what came about 40 minutes. I read that Hofreiter said, and that he, they want to have um, discussions in, in small groups, then I think it's possible to, um, to, to, to have the interests of the young generation more in our focus, which is very important due to the last big coalitions where the focus was very strong on old people. So I really hope that this will have a strategic impact um, on the political life in the next four years. Yes, th thanks very much, Alice. Um, I have another question uh, for you before we go into um, the, um, and I, I can see the questions also being asked. There's lots about uh, how, what topic, what what would FDP focus on, and what, how would the coalitions look like. But before we go into that, I would like to ask one final question about the, the results as a whole, and it's also being asked, for example, by by Joris from D66. Uh, how do you interpret? What's your analysis of the of the voting results of the two extreme parties we have in the German political spectrum? So AFD on the extreme right and but also die linke on on the extreme left um at least could you just say a few words how, how you analyze the the results of those parties which have both i think uh, underperformed uh well yeah let's say underperformed and thanks yeah yeah we are very happy also about that result because i think during the last years um they uh i mean um afd and also links party have been in, in the parliament and the people saw how they are working so what are they focused and they saw okay those parties are not real serious parties and they saw what happens when they are there and have power so i think that um it was maybe a good thing that they were in the parliaments with a high amount um because now people saw what happens then 
And so um, and the people, in my opinion, are not stupid. They see when politicians do good work. And so that's the reason, in my opinion, that they lost a lot of voters, um, especially Links Partei lost because they couldn't focus um, or they were divided on very important topics, for example, on migration. And they don't know whether they want to have a right wing or a left wing position on that. And AFD, um, they are always split in and, and they are always on the right side. And they are the, um, and, and you see when they write resolutions that sometimes they just don't understand the political system. So um, I think people saw those problems and um, I'm very happy that they voted in that way. Yes, thanks very much, Alice. Um, back to you, Torsten. I think the, the interesting discussion now that, uh, every, or the question that everyone is asking, what's going to happen next? So you have already discussed um, the various um, possibilities for coalitions, um, both of, be, be it the traffic light coalition or the so-called Jamaica, both of them involve uh, the liberals, but also the Greens. And then the question is, is it more with the Social Democrats or more with the Christian Democrats? How do you think um, how do you think things will develop in the coming days? Um, and also, what um, what would you say are the priorities of, of FDP, of uh, the German liberals in these discussions? Yes, um, of, of course, the priority is to, to get them the most possible liberal content into the next German government. Uh, so it's at the end about content. And this is what, what will be the base, basis for all the discussions with the other parties, especially with the Greens. How liberal will the next German government uh, will be? And that has to do, for example, with issues like uh, sustainable fiscal policy, like uh, a progressive way forward uh, with climatics politics. We are discussing about certificates uh, and such things very strongly during, during the election campaigns, especially with the Greens. They have different, different opinions this way. And of course, at, uh, last but not le least, uh, one major issue is uh, how will it go uh, will it go forward with German EU politics? Because that's, uh, from my personal perspective, uh, one of the major negative issues over the last 16 years over the Merkel uh, chancellorship because nothing really new came from Germany to bring the EU forward. No new impulses, no really strong issue for bringing the EU forward. And that is something for me personally, which is very, very important uh, for the for the next uh, next German government uh, to, to, to bring this at the, at, the, at the top of the of the topics to be discussed and to be brought forward. So um, yes, thanks very much, Torsten. But how, how how do you think concretely um, th things will happen now in the coming weeks? Um, are FDP going to engage in um, in coalition talks, and with whom? Can you already say something about that? Um, the first first idea is to talk, especially with the Greens directly, and uh, looking whether we can align of some of the very important uh, issues here with them. And then our expectation is that uh, CDU CSU as well as uh, as the SPD will invite us for talks, will invite us for for discussions to to look uh, where are things with common interests, uh, where are the difference between uh, between the parties. From my perspective, it's it's too early to make this more uh, more specific. Because what I think um, a very important issue will be what are what were the internal discussions within CDU and CSU will lead, uh, will lead. I just saw there are different questions on the uh, on this. It's a, it's already said uh, they had never this less uh, voting results as the elections here, especially in Bavaria, for for example, which is uh, something like a cat catastrophe for them, uh, and they have to talk internally and from our perspective the only way forward for Armin Laschet um, as the number one for the CDU CSU is to bring a, a, a government together otherwise he will be gone from from uh, from politics so my expectation is that he will be very open to the Greens and to us for uh, for the topics uh, to be brought into the next government uh, so 
our expectation is that we have a real real chance to bring uh, illiberal content in, into the into the government but how fast this will happen how concrete this will be in the next days it's too early to say Okay, can you, um, another question to you before I come back to Alice, but um, I think that the question that many people are asking and it's just been asked also by, by the audience, um, would the FDP prefer, co prefer a coalition with SPD or with the uh, CDU? <laughs> What's... Yeah, that's uh, the, the questions uh, which, which was very common uh, even over the last days. Uh, what is the preferred coalition? Um, con content wise, I would clearly say that uh, the Jamaica coalition would be the, the best way forward. Um, the, the, the content content speaking, there are, of course, more things which uh, between the CEU, CSU and us, where we have the, the same opinions and less of them with the with the German SPD. I think that is rather clear. Uh, but of course, we already said uh, when the SPD will invite us, uh, we talk to them. Of of course, and uh, at the very end, it depends. It depends on the on the offer. Uh, probably some of the people here in the room knows that in Frankfurt, here in the city, um, uh, we have um, a ample coalition uh, since yeah three weeks now, <laughs> following the the local elections here in in March uh, March this year. Our experience so far is is rather good. So nothing uh, we have to fear as uh, as FTP discussing with them and uh, going into a coalition with them. But of course, looking to our voters, it's much more difficult uh, to uh, to. Um, to make it clear that the ample coalition is a good way forward it's much more easier for us for our voters to go into jamaica coalition that is something we have to keep in our mind over the next uh, over the next week so saying content wise clearly jamaica would be the best outcome but it depends not only on us yeah we'll do what we can the next days and weeks Yes, thank you, Thorsten. And, and back back to Alice, a little bit with the same question, but from, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not expecting you to say something radically different, of course, we're in a public discussion, but from, from the perspective of, of the young liberals, because the question has also been asked um, earlier in, in the chat by Henning, who said it would be interesting for me to know which topics attracted the young voters that you spoke about earlier the most. Was that the pension or climate change or freedom or technolo technology innovation? From that perspective, and I mean, bearing in mind those topics that you that are priorities for the young voters, what would be your preferences in terms of um, coalition talks or possible government involvement from from a youth perspective, Alice? Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, we focused um, on a freedom topics especially, so we tried to. Um, uh, to show that, uh, or a big topic for us were the, the chances. So if you are born in a family that doesn't have the same social status, that it doesn't matter and that you can come into every status in our society. So this was for us as um, Jung Liberale one of the most important topics, but also climate change. I think it was very good that we went to Fridays for Futures demonstrations. We also held speeches there. And in the end, it was okay that 80% maybe there didn't support us, but there were maybe 20% that supported our idea because we had liberal solutions. And it is very important to go into the discussion. And also we tried out um, new ways how we can um, talk with young people. For example, we did a lot of streams live streams that means we invited um, influencers um, the young people know and we tried to bring them together to talk about political things and also we invited people who are not on our liberal side to show okay um, our arguments are also good if we talk with the with other people who, who think a different way um, so this one was something we tried out and we are very happy about it because i think this is a good way to, to have more interactions to have more possibility that people can can be involved on a very low level without a high knowledge so this was also a focus for us and i think that succeeded in a good way yes thanks um you you've already mentioned um also for example climate change there which is very important for young people and i, I would like to uh, bring in another question from the audience uh, and then address that to Torsten on that 
um, because Tobias is asking um, in the audience, what compromises do you deem possible for FTP to come in terms to come to terms with the Greens regarding environmental protection, uh, which I think is uh, possibly one of the one of the most one of the topics that divides FTP and um, and the Greens quite a lot. Um, where do you see possibilities for compromise or for agreement with the Greens, especially when it comes to that, Torsten? Can you already say something on that? Um, yes, I can. Um, I think that this discussion would not be a, a blocking point at, at the very end, because we are... Um, we are together uh, with regard to the to, to the to the outcome and to the target. Uh, it's Paris. It's the agreement agreement of Paris, and the current IPCC data says to all of us, even to the Greens, um, that um, there is more to do than than we currently have already agreed on in our um, in our pro, in our party programs. Uh, and it was very interesting that uh, in in German. Uh, in German public and, uh, and in press uh, that some people were rather surprised that our program on climate change, that our uh, the things we, we brought forward, that they are to some extent even better than uh, with regard to the outcome at the very end, uh, even better and, and harder and stronger than that what the Greens, uh, what the Greens proposed. So the key question will will be not on the target, but on the way to, to, to reach the target. And our expectation is that because the, of the fact that even the EU Commission is strong on the way forward to put uh, to put certificates on every sector and every every sector, and not only on the on, on the on the parts we, we currently have, what's even what we proposed in our in our campaign in our campaign program that we can shift a little bit the greens to that idea which is also as already said proposed by the by the eu commission that we can come to result very very short here in this uh, in this issue that's that's my my hope uh, to say to say uh, to say it uh, to say it that way there are, I think, other things uh, which we would have more intense discussion, like financial sustainability. Uh, Christian Lindner made it very clear. We we, ha we had these Schuldenbremse. I don't know whether there's a very good word in English. Uh, so I, I took the German one, not to to have too many depths for the uh, for the for the public. For the uh, for the public, uh, so that there the Greens say no. Uh, we need money for in, in invests uh, for bringing climate uh, climate protection uh, forward. We say that the main money must come from the private sector because they have to bring forward their processes uh, with less. Uh, uh, with this outcome uh, for the uh, for, for the climate, uh, so we will see that I think in this area we will have the hard discussions with the green and, uh, and of, of the target and the climate change as such. But we will see. Yes, uh, thank you, Torsten. There, there's quite a lot of questions also in in the question and answers about the, the the European impact of the elections. We will come to that in a minute. Uh, I would like to take. There's still a few questions that have been raised concerning more the domestic impact. Then we come to the European ones. Maybe, um, uh, again, Torsten, because it relates very much to what you've said, it's just a bit more specific. I would uh, bring in the question that Katri Kulmuni asked. Um, greetings to Helsinki. Very, very happy that also a member of the Finnish parliament is with us today. And you're asking um, specifically, how will German industrial policy change uh, in case the Greens join the government? So it, it links to what you've just said, but maybe you can um, just add a couple of words on industrial policy and the Greens. Um, Torsten? Yeah, my impression during the campaign from the from the from the Greens, um, I, I have talked to, that they are very very aware that um, German industry has uh, should should have the big should have a big role in future for helping from a technology uh, side uh, to bring climate change forward. So that they are aware of very much of them aware of that only a strong German industry, an innovative German industry will help us to reach the targets of, of Paris, um, especially. Um, so I hope that in the in the hard discussions for potential potential coalition, uh, the uh, saying from from some people, oh, we don't need 
industry in Germany because it's it's against uh, is against climate. Um, I hope that uh, that will not be a, a big discussion. We have the biggest share of uh, or one of the biggest shares worldwide in in the industri industrial part in the in the in the uh, in, in the GDP. So it's important for Germany that that we will have a strong industry even after the elections. I think this is this is understood by the by the re really relevant people uh, within the Greens. And of course, we as uh, as Liberal Party will we, we'll give our best. And of course, we will uh, we'll try to make to make this sure that no, there will be no German politics against industry in Germany and in Europe, because we need the industry for, for everything we have to do over the next years. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Thorsten. Um, back to Alice. Um, there's, there's still quite a few questions being asked about, um, about the role that the CDU or may, maybe Armin Laschet could play. Can you say maybe a few words of how you see um, both? I mean, one of the questions is, for example, is it, um, do you think it is realistic chance that um, Armin Laschet will be the next chancellor, even though they're not, uh, they didn't end up the biggest party? Maybe you could clarify that because that doesn't seem to be um, extremely clear to some of some of the people in our audience, but also say a few words um, because we've spoken a lot about the Greens and what differentiates the Liberals between the Greens. But where, from your point of view, in in case we were to or the party were to negotiate a Jamaica coalition, what would be the biggest, in particular, also the differences and the, the difficulties between the Liberals and the Christian Democrats, which is something that is is rarely discussed. But of course, they are also very different parties. Um, so a few words on that to answer that block of questions. Uh, Alice, thanks. Yeah, so um, I think uh, Armin Laschet has the same chance as Olaf Scholz has because both constellations, as Thorsten Lee said, are possible, like um, the, the Ampel coalition and also the Jamaica coalition and both um, constructions also work. We saw that in our um, regions and uh, people have, or both coalitions also have a high popularity in, in that region. So that shows us that both is possible and that both have the same chances. Uh, but as um, um, Mark uh, uh, said, uh, there are also differences um, between uh, liberals and uh, um, and uh, CDU, for example, and when we talk about foreign policy, um, because the CDU um, is not as um, critical um, to countries like China and Russia. So what FDP did during the last months and what I very like was um, that we put um, a high focus on our values, on our democratic values. We did a lot of action. We criticized China. We criticized what happened in Russia. And we also want to um, stop North Stream 2 until there is no democracy in Russia. And I think for the CDU, this doesn't have such a big role because they say, OK, for us, the economic way is still the most important way. And we liberals say, OK, um, economy is important, but we also need democracy for our economic um, and, um, success. So maybe this is something what divides us a little bit. Um, yeah. Yes, thank you, Alice. Um, you've already touched on foreign policy, and I would maybe um, for uh, for for the next question, I would like to bring in bring in Thomas Ilka again, who gave the the introduction from Friedrich Naumann Foundation in the very beginning, because um, someone has asked us in the chat. Brit has asked what coalition Jamaica or Ampel would get along better with the Macron government to restart the Franco-German engine on the European level. And I think, uh, Thomas, as a Friedrich Naumann Foundation based in Brussels uh, with uh, also strong ties or regular working relationships to France, um, I think you are in a very good position to answer that question for Brit. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, a very good question, of course. Um, for the first part, we have to know uh, who, who will be in government uh, in France next year. I think the stakes for um, Macron are high, but uh, he can uh, very well make it, of course, uh, regard, with regard to, to those who are uh, running against him, presumably. On the other hand, it's a couple of months ago, and if you look back to the uh, election uh, in France last time, um, Macron appeared um, uh, very close to uh, election day, if you like, uh, as well. So, but uh, I believe that uh, the the uh, German uh, Franco 
um, axis or engine or whatever you like to call it uh, will be <clears throat> at the heart of the development uh, in uh, the um, EU, uh, all the more uh, as we have uh, um, uh, the United Kingdom uh, not more on board. So uh, there is a lot to do, but uh, um, what uh, the two of uh, them, uh, both uh, Germany and France, should not miss is uh, that they have to integrate uh, the EU as a whole. I mean, it does not go back to Helmut Kohl's days uh, when there uh, were no uh, Central European um, uh, uh, company, countries on, on board. So what we have uh, to have in mind is that we need an approach uh, for the whole uh, of Europe. And now to the question, um, uh, who is going to make it better? I believe that um, with regard uh, to uh, European politics, uh, both uh, Armin Laschet uh, and um, uh, uh, Olaf Scholz uh, are very much uh, centrist. Uh, Scholz uh, maybe looks more uh, in, uh, on the financial uh, matters. Uh, I mean, Laschet seems to be the guy who is more with his heart and uh, with his mind um, to ready to have an outreach um, for uh, more matters than, than only financial matters. But in the end, they both know that we need a, a stable, uh, a sound uh, um, a coalition within Germany and uh, that uh, they have to um, address uh, Macron um, for all the matters which uh, have been under an umbrella of, uh, of doing nothing uh, with regard to the Merkel years. So I think uh, we can have next year a fresh start uh, for Europe and we need one, of course, in, uh, when it comes to climate, when it comes to security and defense, uh, and when it uh, comes to uh, the inner um, uh, challenges we face in the European Union. So much maybe for that one. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Thomas. Um, in particular on, um, on the consequences for the EU, there are quite a few questions and they very often turn um, on, um, fiscal, on European fiscal policy, the fiscal and stability pact. Um, so I would maybe, uh, we have already touched on that a little bit, but I would, uh, I would go back to Torsten. I think uh, being from Frankfurt, you're very well placed to answer those questions. Um, so we have questions, uh, will the SPD possibly ease the euro area uh, fiscal policy rules? Um, there is uh, another question about the future of the new German government might, or the, the view the new German government might have on the banking union, capital markets union. Um, uh, and there's the last question that's come in just now, the future of fiscal and stability pact. And, uh, yeah, again, so without going into, uh, maybe without going into technical details, um, can you uh, analyze a bit from your point of view how things might develop uh, in that policy area? And then um, afterwards, I'll come back to Alice with some other questions on EU politics that have been raised in the chat. Yeah, that's that's a very good and a very fundamental question on how this, uh, this will go forward. Uh, we said over the last year very, very clearly that um, with the German FDP, uh, no more violations of EU law with regard to the fiscal policy will uh, will happen. That sounds rather theoretically, uh, but of course that uh, that includes a strong saying for financial stability. Um, uh, we are. Uh, we think that the uh, the huge amounts of money. Uh, now, given given uh, through the whole European Union, doesn't doesn't help uh, help with regard to the structural deficits uh, in in many many parts of the EU. So more focusing on financial stability, more focus on innovation on on, on, the, on the, the issues uh, in, the, in the future in, in the future will be will be necessary. More than that, um, and one of our mayor, mayor part we want to bring forward, and that's uh, from my perspective, uh, we are the only party who will, will make this rather strong in the election campaign, saying uh, we, we would like to use the, the future conference, uh, which is now in the debate, to start a new momentum to bring, as Thomas Ilka just said, to bring, bring a new start into into the into the discussion. Uh, and our impression is uh, from the whole. Uh, election campaign. Uh, that is something uh, which I'm 
wondered about every day during during the campaign. The EU, the EU, the future of the EU, plays this role in in the discussion, and that's um, that is not good. That was not good, and that is even not good. And that's from my perspective, uh, our should be our mayor, one of our mayor parts in the next NF government to bring this on the public, to bring this in the in the in the front of the of the next uh, coalition, because sometimes you get the impression in Germany, uh, we are in the middle of Europe and it's good to live in Germany. So everything is well and we have no problems. Uh, and of course, we, we have made major re responsibilities for the future, even in the, especially in the EU. So we have uh, much things to do with regard to the fiscal policy, with regard to foreign policy, with regard to the key issue of a European army, especially, which is an issue we, we brought forward in, in our in our campaign program. So we, we will see how where the discussions in this very important uh, issues will be will go forward the next weeks. Yes, thank you very much, Thorsten. And um, and maybe to at least also the question from um, from the perspective, in particular of the young um, of the young liberals, what would be what would you hope for the next German government to do, or in particular FDP to push for when it comes to new ideas for um, or new proposals for the EU, and maybe link that to a question that was asked um, in the very beginning by um, by Remy on um, what uh, FD what approach the government or FDP should take, especially when it comes to Central and Eastern Europe, uh, the question concerned directly Hungary and the links of uh, CDU CSU with Viktor Orban, um, LGBT rights in Hungary and in Eastern Europe in general, uh, LGBT free zones in Poland. Um, those topics, what uh, what would FDP push for uh, uh, on, um, yeah, when it comes to that? So yeah, to the first question, um, I, I think um, that uh, there is a lot of things to do on a perspective from young people in the, in the EU um, and, to also, um, and to also make it better. Because we, we as liberals always say we criticize the EU not because we, we hate it, bec but because we love the EU. And that's the reason we have to be critical. Because, for example, if you have a look on the budget of the European Union, we have a budget of about 65 billion euro and uh, one third of that goes to agricultural policy and this is support if you have a lot of hectares you get a lot of money that means that for example especially pe people who have a lot of hectare and um, they just get money without doing a lot um, and so for us as, as a young generation this is not the main focus the main focus should be research the main focus should be innovation and so i think that there is a, a lot of things to do because if i have a budget and one third is for agriculture another third is for um, structural support and and just one third is for bureaucracy and a little bit innovation that already shows that the whole construction is not sustainable but has a wrong focus in my opinion so i think that we should go um, in that way and also um we as Junge Liberale have the positions that we should be more open-minded um, in our borders of the EU. For example, we would like to offer also Israel um, a membership if they would like to. So we would start discussions with them whether they are interested to do so. So I think we should think of new ideas. And I think if we um, talk about it in a more creative way and also have more new ideas, then it's possible to attract more people to that whole idea. And the second question you raised about um, Hungary and especially Poland, I'm half Polish. So um, it is always very frustrating to see what happens there, that people um, are in danger when they are fighting for their rights and who they are. Um, but I think we, we cannot do nothing else than still criticizing it then, um, and still putting our punishments that are in our institutions, that we have to put them forward. But also maybe, by the way, try to get more into discussion with the Polish society. So not just the punishment way on the institu institutional level, but also try to get into discussions with the Polish and Hungarian society to maybe, um, to maybe show on and convince them why our liberal values are the right ones and why they have also something from that. Yes, thank you, Alice. 
Um, just a reminder also to, to the people that are listening and following, um, if you still do have questions to ask, um, this is the right moment to do so. Then we still have time, um, then Alice and Thorsten uh, or maybe Thomas still have time to answer them before the event is over. Um, I would like to take another question on, um, uh, and I will give that to Thorsten that has come in um, on a policy area that we haven't discussed yet uh, from uh, Klaus Peter. Um, Greetings to Brussels. What about immigration and asylum on European level? Um, how, uh, actually, at European level and also at national level, how, um, what developments would you see in um, immigration and asylum policy in in new government, Thorsten? Hmm. Uh, good, good, and rather difficult question. Uh, uh, I think it's a big advantage uh, for bringing this polit uh, this aspect of politics forward is that the AFD had lost uh, had lost success, uh, so that uh, so we didn't. I expect that the uh, discussions will be will be easier and not this this sharpened from the from 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 the right wings uh, from 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 our perspective. It's. Um, it's more necessary than ever that that we bring this aspect forward as a as a common European uh, micro, uh, migration politics uh, issue in whole. Not only asylum, but immigration, um, um, and this to to understand this as a as a as one complex which which needs together a general a general European solution. That's uh, in our campaign program since uh, since years. It was in the uh, last EU cam campaign program. It is currently in the uh, in the campaigning program for the uh, for, for for the elections uh, yesterday. Uh, and with focus on that, our understanding is that um, SPD and Greens have basically the same opinion than uh, than we. It's slightly different, but basically the same. Um, we will see how the conservatives in Germany, which uh, in, in the past had even strong discussions with, with their friends, to say it that way, in Hungary and Poland, um, especially how they will deal uh, in future here, here, in, here in Germany. Over the last uh, last years, I, our understanding was that the German CDU and CSU get more more liberal on this issue, but uh, they they took rather long time to accept that even Germany is a country where people want to immig uh, emigrate in, into, um, and they they blocked over uh, over years and over the decades uh, to bring this to the public and say yes that is the case uh, that is just a fact and nothing you can uh, you can discuss politically about um so hopefully when we bring all this together with the uh, less stronger uh, afd i would uh, i would like to say that um, th there will be more room to bring this issue forward in the EU and put some more pressure on EU member states uh, who are still blocking this this central issue for the next next years and next decades. Yes, thanks very much, Thorsten. Um, I, I will ask a, a final round of questions um, to to the panelists. Now, would start by bring by bringing in Thomas for um, for last question. So, the. Um, we now also we've discussed a lot about sort of the, the details in the German parties, but we also from an outside observer's point of view, let's say we've had this paradox, especially in the last few years that we've had Angela Merkel in power for so long, who outside of Germany was always seen as extremely strong and, and powerful and uh, providing stability and inside the country, especially in the last years, it was uh, she was often seen as sort of rather weak at the end of the mandate, which has always been a bit of a paradox. But how, um, from a European perspective, would you say that now that, irrespective of who the new chancellor will be, do you think Germany will um, lose some of its European influence just by the fact that she is gone and somebody uh, new is arriving? That was a question to me. Uh, yes, please, Thomas, yeah. Yeah, well, um, Angela Merkel is gone, but Germany is still there. So uh, and and the weight uh, the weight of Germany within the European Union for its geography for its political uh, being for uh, the economic um, wealth of Germany 
um, is still there. And uh, I mean, um, remember what we were talking about when uh, Helmut Kohl uh, was going out of office and, and other chances before. The interesting thing is that uh, nobody uh, yesterday evening uh, was talking about Merkel anymore. She, she really disappeared. That might come back in a couple of years when the usual um, uh, the usual uh, uh, um, making, uh, talking about the yesterday, the nice days of yesterday um, um, play in. But um, no, I think uh, now we have a new world. Um, we have a new um, party, um, um, new party options on the table. And that is what we have to um, make our challenge. And that is what, where we have to uh, come together and uh, to, to forge a strong, uh, coalition, and that is good for Germany, and that will be good for uh, Europe as well, I believe, because um, new people uh, at the start can uh, live up to the new challenges. And as I said, Germany is still there with its strength. And if it connects not only to France, but if it rebuilds trust vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, other um, countries within Germany, um, within Europe, this will um, uh, be of uh, utmost importance uh, to, to get ahead of uh, the uh, European Union. Yes, thank you, Thomas. And then uh, maybe to summarize a bit um, the, the discussion, Alice, um, what would you say if, if you had to sort of boil it down to one or two real priorities from, for, from young, young liberals for the next government, um, what would that be? You mean now in uh, Germany, right? Not yes, on the European sorry, yes, level. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I think the chances for young people, um, because this is, um, for me, it's a way of freedom to, to give people freedom to do what, what you want to do in your life. And so you have to open the opportunities for everyone. So for me, this is, for example, very important. Um, if you are, for example, getting money from the state and your parents are um, unemployed, then you are not allowed as a child to um, to have a job because you have to pay 80% of what you gain, you have to pay to the state. So it's a very strange thing in, in Germany. If you, if you are in a bad status, then you stay in your status and you don't have good opportunities. And um, a second big topic for me, maybe it's also my as international officer, is also international politics. Um, because I think that young people see what is happening in countries like Afghanistan, that our values are, we have to fight for our values. That is not something that just comes and that is spreading in the world, unfortunately. So I think we have to fight for it and we have to convince other countries that this is the right way forward um, to, to be in, in the big a picture together with the transatlantic coalition and with other democratic countries and to, to have our value of freedom uh, worldwide. So for me, this is also very important. Thank you, Alice. And I would, um, I would like to address the final question to Torsten and then uh, we will finish uh, nicely on time um, just before 10 o'clock. Um, there is, you're going to have to get your crystal ball out because there have been uh, a few questions also on, let's say, what practically what will happen next in a few weeks. Uh, so people, uh, maybe you can just say, for, for the reasons of clarity, say a few things. So, I mean, people were, were asking really what is going to happen now very concretely in the next few weeks, but also people would like to know in case of the FDP enters into government, what uh, what possible ministers uh, could come from FDP. Uh, I know this is very much crystal balls thinking, but of course everyone's talking about talking about that. So maybe you can, you, you can wrap up the discussion by uh, just giving us an overview of what you expect to happen uh, in the next few weeks. This way. <laughs> um, I hope that we have a new German government just before Christmas. That's, uh, that's something which, from my perspective, uh, has to happen because it's ne necessary to, to have, a, have a government that works, that is in work and that give, uh, especially with regard to the, to the EU, some, some, first, um, some, some first point, some first uh, discussion, discussion proposals, because we are up front to the French, uh, uh, French presidency, uh, which is very, I think, will be very important for the future, uh, future of the EU. I would expect that uh, the German FDP will be part of this uh, government just before Christmas. Um, uh, I hope for um, especially uh, 
die, 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 die Fiscal, uh, Fiscal Ministry for, for the German FDP. Christian Lindner already said that that is something which he is strongly interested, interested in. And with regard to the specific coalition, uh, I think I would say 55% Jamaica, 45% uh, Ampel. That's my that's my current current expectation for the for the next week. But uh, the most important focus is bring a government into start before Christmas because that's necessary. Yes, thank you very much, Thorsten. Almost the same prediction that I made myself last night, just the other way around. <laughs> Who knows? It it shows that it's very open. Um, on on that note, um, I would I think um, we've reached the end of uh, the time that we have. I would like to thank uh, first of all, in particular, our panelists, uh, Dr. Thorsten Lieb. Congratulations again, and good luck for the next few years as a member of Parliament. Thank you, uh, Alice Schmidt um, from the Young Liberals. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Thomas Ilka from um, FNF Brussels, uh, also co-host uh, of the event. Thank you very much, but also. And maybe in particular, the person that no one has actually seen on the screen, but who's been behind the scenes and has prepared this event, um, uh, Daniela Morales from um, the ALDE party, uh, I believe together with Adriana from Friedrich Naumann Foundation. So thank you very much also for, um, for doing, uh, yes, it's vir uh, virtually clap um, for all the preparation work for this. Um, so on that note, if um, any of the people in the audience, if you do have questions coming up in the coming weeks uh, or days even, um, or want to know or want to get in touch, because I know some of the people in the audience, you're also members of parliament, et cetera, do reach out to us. Um, we're very happy to make uh, or everyone, the foundation, the party, the, the group in the parliament, everyone's happy to make connections, answer questions. Um, so if you don't have our contact details, the ALDE party, I'm sure can, can uh, forward them to you. Um, having said that, thanks very much to everyone. Thanks everyone for listening, for joining. Um, let's see what the future will bring. It will be exciting. And then if there's a new government, maybe we organize, um, we can organize a similar event again to um, discuss a bit more what the government will actually do. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.